Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about your fourth quarter quadratic function baseball task, part three, the third and final component. Definitely the most involved, so feel free to watch this as many times as you need to. You can scroll back and forth to the different portions that you need in particular. Um, and we're going to go through the entire thing from beginning to end, selecting a player's home run data, writing that function, doing some algebraic work, system stuff to solve it, and ultimately graphing that particular function. Okay, so the first component here, which many of you already did, is selecting a home run, giving MLB StatCast. I'm going to select Daniel Murphy. This is from 2015. Um, I'm on my iPad, so it's a little off-center for some reason, but Daniel Murphy's home run was 421 feet, and we're looking for the height, which is that column all the way on the right, which was 85.8 feet. Okay, this was in 2015 in the postseason. This was against the Chicago Cubs. Um, this happened to be in Chicago, so at Wrigley Field. You can get more data on that by typing in the date and looking up the game, and it will tell you, I believe it says venue, um, for which stadium it was played in. Don't just assume because you're picking a player that used to be on the Mets that it was in City Field. So you, you have to dig into this a little bit, and many of you already started doing this with the Google Form. So this is important because we're going to be using these figures, the 421, the 85.8, and some given knowledge, we're saying that everyone's hitting the ball from three feet off the ground. We're going to be using all three of those to help us come up with a function that should model the path of Daniel Murphy's home run ball. Okay, so like I said, these are the three pieces of information we know right now. I'm going to be writing the generic vertex form of a quadratic. The height at contact is given. We're all going to be using that 0, 3. We're assuming that everyone hits the ball from three feet off the ground. Okay. Already, we already know the maximum height is 85.8. We don't know that x value, but that basically gives us the k value of our vertex form. Okay, I'm also using the point 0, 3 here. I'm going to be plugging in 3 for my y value and 0 for my x value. And this is going to help me come up with an equation. I'm substituting in 85.8 for k. Basically, think of this, we have three variables we have to find by the end of this. A, H, and K. And K, you should already know already because that's your maximum height, whatever it is for your particular problem. Okay, 0 minus H is negative H. If we square that, it's going to be positive H squared. So notice this is an equation with two variables. I can't solve it, but what I can do is solve for it in terms of another variable. If I subtract 85.8 from both sides... I'm going to get negative 82.8 divided by h squared. And that gives me a equals negative 82.8 over h squared. That's going to be important because I'm going to be able to use this for substitution later on. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to... Once again, write the vertex form, what I know, another piece of information here. The landing spot, I know 421 feet from home plate, it lands or has a height of zero. Okay, I know that 85.8 again, that's known, so I don't have to put K ever again. Now, I put an arrow next to A because I'm going to substitute what we just found in bottom, um, in red on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, that A is equal to negative 82.8 over H squared. So how is this going to help us? Because if you notice, almost like a system with substitution, we, know, we now go from two variables to simply one. We only have h in here. So we can solve this. And this is going to be on the next slide. But basically my goal here is to get this messy looking quadratic into standard form. Get it equal to zero. Get it in that trinomial looking, you know, more normal way. And then I can apply the quadratic formula. You can already see there's a lot of decimals going on here. This probably isn't going to be... Uh, factorable and you know solved very easily so once I get in standard form I could just apply the quadratic formula I'm gonna get two answers obviously I'd only want the positive one I'm probably gonna get a negative as well which we'd reject for obvious reasons because we're talking about horizontal distance we can't have a negative value there so this is the initial setup using those three values everyone will have that zero three we'll all have that um, in common but everything else should be different this point was from your landing distance. You're adding in that zero because obviously the ball is landing, it hits the ground. Now, 
you're given the vertex, but you're missing a component here. And that's what really makes this problem very tricky. You're missing the X value. All of that StatCast website tells us is the maximum height. It doesn't tell us how far from home plate it is at that maximum height, which, is make, which makes things very tricky, obviously, and why that makes it more of a system than just simply plugging in or doing a quadratic regression. Okay, so I'm going to continue my work here. Remember I said I want to get this in standard form. To do that, I'm first going to multiply both sides by h squared. Obviously, on the left, I'm still going to have 0. 0 times anything is still 0. On the right, I'm going to get some nice canceling taking effect. Um, that's why I'm really doing this. That over h squared is going to cancel with the h squared that I'm multiplying it by. So it's already getting a little bit cleaner. 421 minus h squared. I'm going to have to box method that in a second. And the 85.8 gains in h squared because I did multiply it by that. You could, think of, you could really think of this as distributing. We don't want to lose fact that also the 85.8 gets hit by the h squared. So it cancels with the first part of the right-hand side. However, it does latch on to the second or the right-hand portion. Okay. Now I'm going to box method just for time purposes. I'm going to already write the answers. I'm going to do 421 minus h times 421 minus h. That's going to give me 177,000. And that is 241 minus... 421 twice gives me 842h plus h squared. That's just doing box method. Okay. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 82.8. Because remember, there's multiplication taking place there. So I'm going to be passing that negative 2, excuse me, negative 82.8 to the trinomial inside the parentheses. Basically, I'm multiplying three times here. And as a result, I'll come up with this. I'm going to just skip this step and combine the 85.8 h squared. So I'm basically combining like terms and distributing in the same, same step here. I come up with 3 h squared. That's because I had a negative 82.8 plus 85.8. 69,717.6 h. That's just by multiplying the, the middle that distribution problem up top. And my constant here, the very first multiplication, I would get negative 1467554.8. Like we said earlier, this is definitely not going to be factorable. So we're going to be applying the quadratic formula. Remember, that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And these are my a, b, and c values. Once again, I was just combining a step of Combining like terms, no pun intended, and distributing in one between those bottom two blue lines there. So I'm going to set up our quadratic formula. And all of this work, what is this all for? This is just to give us h. When we're all done solving this, we'll get two answers. Like we said, one of them might be rejected if it's negative. This is going to tell us our h value. k we had right off the bat, the maximum height. This will give us the h value, basically the x value of the vertex when we're all said and done. Okay, so I'm just carefully writing in all my numbers into the quadratic formula. After we're done with this, remember we had one additional variable to solve for, and that was A. A, H, and K are the things that we're missing in that vertex form quadratic. We have K, we're gonna get H as soon as we solve this quadratic formula, or finish up the formula itself, and then we're just missing A. Okay, so <clears throat> once I have everything written in, and you want to take a step to do this, as you can see, the numbers are pretty complicated. So I'm taking a second to actually write it down. This way, obviously, you're going to be using your calculator, but just reinforces it and you have it down on paper in case you do make any mistakes. You can go back and reference it quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in, see how the numbers come out, and we'll take a look in a second. All right. So once I typed everything into my calculator under the quadratic formula or in the quadratic formula, all the numbers under the radical, I get this. Okay, plus or minus 70,969.36246 plus or minus all over 6. Like we said, we're going to get two answers, one where we're adding that second number, one where we're subtracting. 
And rounding wise, remember the project we talk about the nearest hundred thousandth. So I, obviously I don't want to cut off any decimals. So my two answers, if I add the 70,000, I'm going to get 208.627 and change. And my second answer would be negative 23,447. This would be a negative horizontal distance. So obviously that value is going to be rejected. Okay, this would be a problem, uh, a value that we wouldn't be utilizing in this problem. A negative, if we're talking about distance, doesn't make much sense. So we have our H value. We have roughly, what does this mean in the problem? At 208 feet, roughly, it's where it reaches that maximum height. So we have the X value of the vertex. And now we're missing A. Recall one of the very first things we did was solve for A in terms of H. So now if I know what H is, I can go ahead and plug in that value of 208.6. Remember, this is what we came up with two slides ago where we were solving for A in terms of H. So now I can plug in, just like a system of equations. Once we found x, we plugged in to find y, doing the same process here. I want to be careful to get all those decimals in. Utilizing my graphing calculator here, I'm going to go ahead and square that 208.6, do negative 82.8 divided by that, come up with roughly negative 0 0.00190234337. Okay. Once again, I don't want to cut off any decimals. I'm not sure about rounding yet, so I'm just writing as many as my calculator gives me at this point. So now I have everything I need. I just found A, and rounding to the nearest hundred thousandths, that's going to give me negative 0 0.00190, or I could just leave that final zero off, 19. Adding the extra zero doesn't help or hurt me in any way. For H, rounding to the appropriate decimal would be 62708. It was 7, but the 6 after it bumps it up to 8. And my K value, I knew this the second I picked Daniel Murphy, was 85.8. That was just the maximum height. So now since I know A, H, and K, I've determined the vertex form of my quadratic. I'm going to call my function M of X, and I'm simply going to plug in those three values that we just found. Makes sense that A is negative, because think about it, this would be a sad face, quote unquote, parabola, so this should be negative. If I didn't get a negative, I know something's wrong. X minus 208. Remember, we're putting the minus there because I hop, that really refers to positive 208.6, squared plus 85.8. And this is going to model the path of Daniel Murphy's home run ball that I happen to pick. Obviously, your numbers are going to be drastically different depending on um, the home run. But the algebraic process is going to be very similar. First, solving for A in terms of H, substituting in, getting it in standard form and applying the quadratic formula. And then once you have that H value, plug it back in to get A. And that's Daniel Murphy's home run trajectory. And now the last and final component is going to be observing the graph of this home run. Okay, so I went ahead and already plotted what this home run looks like. This happened to be in Chicago where the wall is 355 feet, I believe, from home plate and 16 feet in the air. So that's what I, I drew this black little line here. Remember in part one, you were doing the Red Sox and you had that line already drawn. In this case, it's a different stadium, depending wherever you picked. For me, Daniel hit, Murphy hit this ball against the Chicago Cubs in Chicago, so this is where his wall happened to be. And the same process from part one. If you haven't, I would, if you haven't done so already, I'd go back and watch the part one video of how to plot you know, a quadratic that's as complicated and has as many decimals as this. It's basically a rough sketch. So I plotted the initial point here. Once I came up with this, I utilized Desmos as well to kind of give me an idea of different values that I was dealing with. But I plotted the initial value, which is around three feet. I plotted where it landed, which for Daniel's case was 421 feet, roughly. Okay, I plotted the vertex, which is at around 208. Okay, so notice I put a little bit before 210 and 85.8 feet in the air. So again, these are all approximations. I'm not going to be able to exactly plot 85.8, but I'm approximating it. Okay, I put two values that are symmetrical on either side of the vertex. I utilize the, uh, the table feature on Desmos to help me with that. 
and I roughly sketched what this home run will look like as we could clearly see here. It might be a good idea maybe to add this point at 355 so you have a nice idea or you know you're actually showing that it's clearing the the wall. This is what Daniel Murphy's home run looks like on a graph. Something I know we're all very interested in. Um, obviously it could be a little complicated but once again same as part one a rough sketch. You want to make sure you definitely have more than three points. If you just have the vertex the initial and the landing spot it can be rather hard to connect. So I utilize Desmos or your graphing calculator to add a few more points. The more points, the better. It's going to make it easier for you to connect a nice, smooth, and crisp graph. Thank you guys for watching. This concludes all the components of your Algebra 1 fourth quarter project. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me as soon as possible. Obviously, this project can be a little involved. It's not something that you want to leave for the day before it's due. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, ask me in class, or ask me through email. Thank you all for watching, and have a fantastic day.